uh, one of the very lucky teachers who is working at or teaching at Vista Hills Public School. And uh, I brought some of my amazing students to kind of share some of the things that we are doing at our school. So this year, or actually, let me start way back last year. Last year, I actually, come on in, ladies. Last year, I actually started in something that uh, was called a STEM Learning Hub. And it all started by a teacher on Twitter putting out there, I'm looking for some teachers who would like to jump on into my learning hub situation. And I thought, ooh, what is a learning hub? What does that look like? And I'm one of these people, if you know anything about me, and the students will tell you, I jump in with everything two feet, and then afterwards go, oops, what, I, what was I thinking? Okay, so when it came across the Twitter feed, I went and thought, ah, oh, this should be kind of fun, it should be interesting, I'm in. And so what did that mean? Well, it meant a few things. <laughs> I joined a group with teachers from Nashville, Hawaii, New York, Barrie, and we created this thing called a learning hub. The teachers taught different subjects, language, science, math, all kinds of different subjects, and we put our students into groups. And the groups were created by students not in the physical room. So imagine yourselves right now, you've been put into a learning hub, and you are now required to communicate a specific challenge or a solution to a problem with people that aren't in this physical room, okay? And you're now required to communicate with them a solution, okay? So this is the challenge that my students were given last year. One of the challenges we had was it was language, a lot of language teachers, and I at the time was teaching grade seven science, okay? So that looked a little bit different. So that was a struggle, but we'll talk about those struggles as we go along. The, the, go ahead, Stephanie, yeah. Our little clicker's not working, so I'll just go this way. It all started by my professional learning network, and I can't tell you enough wonderful things about how powerful having a professional learning network means to me. Um, I remember years ago, probably, I don't know, maybe about 10 years ago, not even having a Twitter account and thinking, why would somebody need it? Why would me, a teacher, even need it? Because I don't even need to stay, people don't need to know where I am and what I'm doing, right? It's not their business. Anyway, I was so wrong. So I have two Twitter accounts, and I have one for my classroom at Mrs. Bumstead, and I have my professional one at Tanya Bumstead. My professional one is to reach out and learn from other peers like yourselves. And I've used that network to reach out and ask questions, to learn stuff from others, to gather ideas and bring back to my classroom. And this is how this learning hub started. A teacher in New York posted this idea, and we all jumped on board and went from there. Go ahead, Ellie. Now, because it didn't work so well last year, my students were doing a language learning hub. So imagine we had the challenge that they had to write a poem about what they were learning about. We're in the middle of this structures unit in grade <laughs> seven science, and they were asked to write a poem about it. That was challenging and difficult. But they did it. Bless their souls, they worked so hard to create these beautiful poems about structures, right? And they shared them with, with their learning hub, and it was, it was a magical connection that they made with these students from around the world. So this year I thought, yeah, you know what? I need to be brave, and I need to be the one putting myself out there and create my own STEM learning, my own learning hub. And I thought, you know what? I teach science, I teach math, how can I make them work? So I looked at the STEM criteria where we're connecting science, technology, engineering, and if we're talking about STEAM, the arts, and mathematics, okay? And I put this tweet out there, I remember the date, it was the last week of June, and I put the tweet out there and I said, I'm looking for teachers who wanna jump on board my STEM learning hub. Direct message me if you wanna learn more. And then the magic started happening. Uh, Dawn Fry from Lincoln Heights in Waterloo sent me a message right away and she said, Tanya, I'm in. She didn't know what it was about, but she was in. <laughs> so we started creating things. At the end of the presentation, I'll show you what our framework looked like. We created a doc, and we just started basically like a graffiti situation, just typing all kinds of crazy things and ideas that we had to get it started. Uh, then I had a, a teacher from New York contact me, who is a STEM coordinator for his board. And he said, this is right down our alley. I'm connected with three schools in New York, and we would love to connect with you. So all of a sudden, the magic started happening. <laughs> and I started getting goosebumps, and 
thinking, yes, this actually is working. My professional <laughs> learning network is working for me because it's a little bit fearful when you put that tweet out there and you're thinking, who's going to see it and how are they going to react to this and is it actually going to go, right? But we went with it and it happened. So what does the STEM Learning Hub look like? Because I know that's a different kind of lingo than what we're used to. A learning hub is basically a group. In our situation, we have 20 groups. And the students are placed in, in my classroom in 20 of those different groups. So Ali's in a different group than Stefan. Stefan's in a different group than Alexandria. And they're all in a different group. In their group, they have a student from New York, a couple students from New York because they're in different classes, and different students from Dawn's class. <laughs> I teach three classes, so in their class, in their hub, Allie will have somebody from my other class in there and um, from the third class. So, you know what, if they get their challenge, they can talk in the halls about, and it's interesting because they do start talking, hey, I found out you're on my learning hub, and they're starting to talk about what they're going to do and what's going to happen. So these are, this is kind of what it looks like. Go ahead, guys. The one difficult thing that I found in creating these things with people outside of WRDSB is sometimes their board initiatives and ideas are different than what we're doing here, right? And then as we started talking, it's interesting because maybe the lingo is not the same, but we're, we're all on board doing the same thing, right? It all comes together. So it may not look like this plan, act, assess, and reflect, and maybe they're using different words, but let's be honest, teachers are teachers around the globe and we're all trying to establish the same things for our kids, right? So this is how we kind of, so I set the framework as this is what we're doing in WRDSB. What does it look like in New York? It was the same for Dawn at Lincoln Heights, which was really easy, but what does it look like in New York? And what we found was it pretty much was gonna look the same as we started communicating things online. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my role and then I'm passing it over to students here because they've got a lot to share. My role looked like this. I did the legwork to find the connections to the class, the teachers out there that were interested in my crazy plan. Okay. The next thing that I did was I created the learning hubs. So basically dividing the students up amongst the 20 groups from each of the schools. Teachers sent me their names and we divided them up there. Okay. I helped the students create their blogs. So we do everything on the GAF platform. Okay. We've communicated through Google Hangouts, We've, um, students are communicating through their blogger account, and then we're, we communicate every day through Google Classroom. Okay. The next thing that happens is then I just supervise their blogs. So every couple of days I'll go into each learning hub and look and see what their blogs look like. What are they communicating? What are they talking? At this point it's initial stage because we haven't really drawn our challenges yet. But um, at this point, they're just introducing themselves, welcoming everybody else to their hub. Okay? And then I get to sit back and just watch the magic happen, which is an exciting part. Go ahead, Allie. So I'm gonna, students are going to take it over. They're going to introduce themselves and then kind of tell you about their role and how it works for them. Hi, my name is Alexandria. So in class, we're communicating with Google Hangout. So it's kind of like this. <laughs> About two weeks ago, maybe more, um, we communicated with two classes at these pumps that said, one in New York and another class in Waterloo, and we were asking questions back and forth to get to know one another. And when we communicate, which will be once a month, we will be drawing our challenges for our learners. Hi, my name is Stefan, and you've created our blogs to introduce ourselves to our learning hubs. And these are blogs to show our results of the STEM challenges, which I will talk more about. Some of the pros of blogs are we can make better global connections. The cons of it is that if you have a question to someone on our blog, you can just turn around and ask the person the question. You have to comment on the blog, which can take time to respond to it. Hi, my name is Allie, and in our learning hubs, we're doing a STEM challenge draw where we pick out of a hat a piece of paper and it has a challenge that our hub is required to investigate and by the end of the month we come up with a solution and then we share the solution with our hub. So um, an example of a challenge that um, a learning hub could pick out is if you could create a mobile app or computer program that would help an aspect of human life on the planet, what would it be? So if someone picked out that, their learning hub would have to try to come up with a solution solution to that problem. And also, we're picking out our challenges tomorrow, so by Friday we'll know what our challenges are and what we need to do to solve them. Hi, my name is Allie, and in our learning hub, 
a little bit excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> How does this change learning? So it's not just paper and pencil like most schools may use. We're also helping the environment because by not wasting as much paper, we're using Google Hangout and our blogs to communicate. And it also prepares us for STEM-related careers because in the future, technology will keep on growing and most of our jobs will probably require technology, so it's good that we start using it now. This changes learning because we're not communicating with just our class, we're communicating with others around the world, and we will also get to see what other students' locations and their learning environment is like. And also the students will have to be accountable to be able to complete the challenge for their help, so it's a responsibility to you. It's also to evaluate our work with our peers in our learning hub, and by doing this we can develop our problem-solving skills so later in the future when we get jobs, we can solve bigger and harder problems. So before we go into questions, I just want to step up here and show you kind of what the framework framework looks like. So this this is what the graffiti <coughs> wall looked like a little bit when we started this summer. So this is the three teachers here. We actually had a lady uh, teacher from Nashville who was in and then said, "I'm a brand new teacher at a brand new school and I'm not sure I can take this on." And I tried to encourage her, saying, "Guess what? I'm a new teacher at a new school too, and you can do it." But she wasn't she wasn't as crazy as what I was. So that's okay. We're gonna try and get her on board next year. Um, so this is what we did, and we just kind of went through, and I created the framework in the black to ask questions, and everybody just kind of added their feedback of how they thought it should go back and forth, and then at the end is where we started creating ideas for what we would do for our challenges. So I think we've created over 35 different challenges there. And like I said, tomorrow these will be put in a hat. Students will pull out, so STEM Hub number one is gonna come up, draw their challenge, and over Google Hangout is gonna announce what their challenge is for their, for their hub. And then STEM group number two is gonna draw their challenge. And then the STEM leader, so that is the person who is, if I can show you this, these are the hub groups that I've created here. And so the STEM leader is the first person right now, because this is the class that's going to be drawing um, tomorrow. They're the leader, and their job is to communicate with their hub what challenge they got. And then what will happen is the next time we draw, the STEM learning hub leaders are going to come from Lincoln Heights. They'll be in charge of communicating what our challenge is, and then they will talk back and forth. Do we need to set more parameters for this? What kind of questions do we have about this before we start? And the students kind of create that framework themselves. And then they go off, they create their challenges, post their results on Blogger, and then they talk back and forth about, wow, this is really great, you came up with here, why did you choose this solution? And they're asking each other questions online. The students all have access to that through, there we go, through my blog. So they go to my blog, mrsbumstead.blogspot.ca, they click on the STEM Learning Hub, and then through there they can click on the Hub Group. So they have access to this. So right now as we speak, the students are back in the classroom and they're working today at communicating with their Hub Groups. So Jamil here, he'll be going into everybody in his stub, stub, uh, STEM Hub Learning Group, and it's a tongue twister, and then he'll be going in and welcoming them. So I think, was it Jadis that we went into? Samantha's. We went into Samantha's earlier. So Samantha is in New York. This is what Samantha's blog looks like. And then you can see down below, there's one comment waiting for her. So when she goes in here, Jamil has already welcomed her. So he's, welcome Samantha to learning hub number three. My name's Jamil. I really like basketball and volleyball as well, but my favorite sport is soccer. You can see my posts here at jamil7a.blogspot.com. So he's just making that connection with her to let her know this is I'm, I'm your STEM Hub leader, this is what I'm here to help you out with and making connections with her. And that's basically where we have been so far. Now like I said, I um, did this last year and I jumped in probably too quickly with two feet because I didn't learn too much about what I was doing, I just went let's go for it. and. Students got a lot out of it because they made those global connections and it's interesting because I, I was talking to a few students the other day who said, you know Mrs. Bumstead, I still use my blog probably once a month and I'm still communicating with my friends in Hawaii. 
And I got goosebumps thinking, oh my goodness, that's exactly why we're doing this, right? Because that's what we want students to do. If you're communicating what's happening on a blog, that's fabulous. And number two, you're still making those connections with those people that you've made in your learning hub. So that's, you can't ask for more. I think if I was to give anybody suggestions in this room, don't be crazy like me and jump in with two feet and go too big, but start small. And start small by who teaches the grade that's similar to mine, maybe within my school? Who teaches a grade that's similar to a school that's close to mine? Who teaches a subject that's similar to mine? And go from there. And start with one or two schools, classes, and go from there. I was talking to a gentleman from West Heights and he had just said that they're doing passion project in his class and he thought, this would really work to make those connections with another school who's doing passion project. So we make some connections, maybe we'll find some more people that we can communicate that with. So I'm gonna leave the floor to you guys. If you have any questions for any of us, we'd be happy to answer those. So yes. you, you put, to start your connections, you started with Twitter. Yes. And that's where you, you kind of made those connections with teachers from other places, New York yeah. and local. And then once you had that set up, you used Google Drive to Google share Docs, yeah. or Google Docs yeah. to share document. Mm -hmm. And then you used blogging for that's where the kids were really taking it. Right. 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 Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Not really a question, I just wanted to make sure I was No, yeah, and you know what? It depends on <laughs> the teachers that you're working with, on what they're comfortable with. I was lucky that everybody was on board of using Blogger to communicate with the students, so it worked out nicely, and they were all familiar with the GAF um, platform, so that was really, it worked out well for us, but that's something that obviously you can work with whoever is on board and joining your adventure, right? Like, depends on what they're comfortable with. Last year when I did it, um, teachers, we actually used an app called Voxer, and it's almost like having a walkie-talkie. You record your voice and you leave a message for your group and then they answer that message and they can hear it. So we, we actually talked and I actually, it was quite neat being able to hear the voice of the teachers in Hawaii and the teachers in New York and we're talking back and forth that way. So it just depends what they were used to communicating with and it just fell into place that way.